Code, please. Welcome back. This time we're going to talk about basic types and operators. Computer programming is the act of telling a computer what to do. In order to do that, we typically rely on passing some type of information around the computer program to accomplish a certain goal. It might be some math computation or transforming some data from one format to another, like transforming a web request into an actual document that is useful for us, like a web page on a browser, just to name a couple of examples. This information, let's call it data, needs to be structured in a way that computers understand. This data comes in different types. Let's explore those in the Elixir Interactive Console, IEX. This requires some basic math knowledge, but there's really no way around it when it comes to programming. All right, let's get started. So basic types in Elixir can be integers, for instance, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. They can also be floats, so basically numbers with a decimal part, can be like 1.5, 1.0, whatever. Um, they can also be uh, true or false. These are also basic types. They can also be atoms or, as they are called in other languages, symbols. They can be strings, which are basically um, words or sentences. So if I write hello world here, this is basically a string. They can be lists. Lists can be comprised of other basic types. So we could have, for, for instance, a list made of uh, integer uh, values, or we could have a list made of atoms, for instance, let's say uh, one and two, or we can mix and match. So we could have like potentially an integer and then for instance, a float and I don't know, a string, bar. So these are all valid. It's a list of other basic types or even complex types. And we can also have uh, something called tuples. So for instance, this is a tuple that contains uh, three integers and those are the basic types. Now with these types in mind, we can do, for instance, comparison between values. Let's say we want to know if one equals two. It's false. So, but if we do one equals one, then we get true. So equals equals is the comparison operator. Basically tells us true or false to the expression that we are asking the computer to compute. Well, um, we could also do something like, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say we want to ask if the float one dot zero is equal to the integer one. And actually, Elixir computes that as true, because it assumes it's the same kind of value. So there, there's some implicit meaning here um, that you should be aware of. So math-wise, you also have all the other operators that you would expect. So you could basically uh, add numbers, or uh, let's say divide numbers, or for instance, multiply numbers, or subtract numbers, obviously. You might have noticed that when I divided 2 by 2, I got back a float value instead of an integer value. That is because the slash operator of, or division operator in Elixir always returns a float as the result of the division. And uh, if we were interested in the integer uh, division, we could do div 10 3, for instance. And this will give us the integer result of this division. So this is effectively uh, the same as doing 9 divided by 3, which is going to give me an integer, and I will get 1 as the remainder. Speaking of the remainder, if I'm interested in the remainder of this operation, I could do rem 10 3, and I get 1 back as the remainder. As a side note, Elixir also supports the scientific notation. So, for instance, I could do 1.0 to the exponent of uh, minus 10, for instance. This will give me a proper valid number. It also supports uh, some utilities like rounding uh, values. So I could round, for instance, 3.6 and I would get 4. Or I could do also trunk, which is going to do the same, but do to the bottom, basically. Elixir also has some other functions that allow us to test for certain things. So I could test if, for instance, the integer 1 is a boolean. It's not a boolean, obviously, but if I try this with true, for instance, I do get true. 
And if I try this with false, I also get true because true and false are both, are both uh, actually booleans. Another interesting fact is that, for instance, the true and false keywords in Elixir, they are actually atoms. And true, false, and nil are actually three atoms for which Elixir allows you to drop the, the, the colon um, nomenclature. So I could do this, and this would be effectively the same as just true, as we can see using the comparison operator. So another interesting fact is that Elixir strings, which we saw before, are represented using double quotes. They are encoded in UTF-8. Uh, you don't need to worry about this, but it just means that you can write any type of accents um, in strings. So you could potentially represent any kind of language, uh, real world kind of talked language um, in these strings and it will be okay with all its accents and variations and whatnot. So since I'm running on Windows, I might run into a problem if I try to actually use accents here, but there is a workaround for this. So I can just go to the console and I can basically change my uh, encoding on the console to support this. And if I go back to IEX, then I, I get a proper representation of a string that is UTF encoded. Okay, so this video is already starting to become quite long. So what I'll do is split it into two separate videos. And on the second one, we'll learn how to organize our code a little bit better. We'll learn about the bit variable assignment. And we'll also see a couple of examples of uh, some code. So until next time, cheers. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and liking and sharing with your friends. It really helps the channel to grow. Thank you.